Alright guys, so I was planning on going live tonight at 7 o'clock, but I figured I would just make a video and, and make it a little bit easier that way. So if you got any questions after this video is done, put them down in the comments and, uh, and I'll try and get them answered for you. So we got a few talking points that we want to go over. Um, this weekend, I know you guys have been waiting all year and uh, I know you guys are ready to race. So. Friday night, uh, this is something that we haven't done before, but we're going to do grudge races on Friday and Saturday. So Friday night, we're going to do qualifying. Every time we do qualifying, it's the same as the last year's, but if you're new, um, what you need to do is you got to come in and make three fast passes. As fast as you can. You can make as many passes as you want all night, but I want your three fastest time slips. We're going to average those out, and that's how we're going to place you on the list. So. That'll be pretty easy on Friday night. We're going to start at around 5 o'clock and let people run until 10 o'clock at night. Uh, this year, what we do have though is a couple of rules that I really want to make sure start to get implemented. One, it's always been around since the beginning, but you got to wear pants. Shorts just aren't going to cut it. Um, we're, we're, we're running some really fast, expensive bikes out here, and there's no reason to not be safe. So I just want to see people do the right thing and be safe. If you got a bike that's faster than four seconds, I really want to see people start wearing neck braces. Um, you know, I know that they're they're not cheap, but when it comes down to safety and uh, your life, you know, spending a couple hundred dollars on a neck brace isn't that big of a deal. You got to have a tether switch on your bike. Your bike, we're gonna tech it. We're gonna make sure that it is in a safe running condition. Um, you know, just like. Previous years, you can call out up to three bikes on a weekend, um, and if people in front of you, if you get through all three of those bikes, and the people in front of you want to keep moving forward and, and let you call them out also, you can do that. But we only require up to three bikes, so people can hold you up after that. So I know that it's been a, a, a long winter this year, and we've all wanted to start racing since April. Um, I know everybody that ran down to Bakersfield and had an awesome time down there, they're, they've been chopping at the bit for a while to get at it. So one thing that I did implement for qualifying is that if you went to any one of the tracks around the country and were able to make three solid passes this year, then um, you can use those to qualify on the list. But they need to be dated this year. They can't have any odd errors. So if there's a zero in place of anything like 60 foot or a half track or a weird mile an hour, something like that, we're not gonna be able to accept those time slips. We wanna keep it fair for everybody. And uh, this was just a way to let people do some qualifying and work the bugs out of their bikes before this first event. Now, if you did do that and you have those three slips, bring them to me Friday night. And while I'm putting the list together, if you didn't make any faster that night, you can add those to your time so we can get you qualified. We're going to have three different classes just like last year. Single cylinder, twin cylinder, and unlimited. Um, I'm really happy that we, we changed over to this kind of platform because there was some really tight competition between single cylinder two-stroke bike and some single cylinder Raptors. Uh, one pretty exciting call out going on this weekend. It's the ATV Park Central last year's number one Raptor uh, powered by Timothy. Uh, it's Matt McCormick's bike. Um, they, they've been consistently running some killer passes with that bike all year long, which uh, on a nitrous motor like that is hard to do, so I gotta give them props for that. Um, but they've got some stiff competition this year. There's a couple bikes coming out that are no joke. Um, and the first one to call them out is, is brand new uh, Darcy and, and Steve Summerlin's bike, Arlene. And it is one bad bitch. And uh, I'm here to tell you that nobody on that single cylinder list is safe as long as they're running that bike. They've gone the last couple of years from hardly being in the top of the list to uh, last year they, they were down at the bottom of the list every race they were knocking on the number one and number two bikes door so uh, they're in it for the long haul they're in it to stay and they have a seriously badass bike that uh, nobody gets to underestimate. Friday night what we're going to do when you come down to do your qualifying we're just going to tech those bikes we're going to look them over we're going to make sure they're safe to run. Uh, you know, we're not super picky about the rules and, and we keep it lenient so we can make sure that the new racers that come in, uh, you know, they have a good time and they have fun and, and it's not too expensive. Uh, but there are a couple things I would like to address and, and one of those things is 
uh, the, the slower bikes. Um, every year there, there's you know 10 to 20 bikes that they're just out there to practice. They're just out there to have fun. Um, they're not too serious but you know one or two of those people every year go from want to have fun on their on their slower bracket bike to building a bike that can compete with all the rest of us and I know for a fact that there's a few people uh, Darcy Summerlin and Matt McCormick they're the perfect example three years ago they didn't have a bike in the Northwest to, to hang with anybody and you know last year they're number one and number two so uh, that's awesome and, and we want to keep that trend going um, it's all about bringing in new racers and uh, and pushing the sport and growing the sport so that's something that I'll never stop doing um, and I know that people want to be able to have enough passes but it's all about putting on a show and, and having a good time we want people to be excited about this we want spectators to be excited about this so we got to make sure that that we uh, we maintain the way that we've been doing things I also want to give a big shout out to the guys that went down south this winter and really represented for the Northwest whether they have a bike on the list or not it's awesome to see this sport up here in the Northwest grow and uh, I'm glad that I can be a part of that and, and help push it. So, um, you know, I want to hear the questions and concerns that you guys have about what we have going on. So if you have any, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comments and, and I'll answer them for you. And uh, I always try and keep things fair for everybody. So I hope that, um, you know, as we keep moving forward, that, that we can keep doing that and uh, create, you know, sustain a good relationship with all these racers and, uh, keep the sport growing like it has been the last couple of years and I owe that all to you guys being awesome racers the competition is awesome people want to come race with you guys and uh, and and I really take pride in that so thanks for listening to this video uh, I'm excited for this next weekend it's gonna be some kick-ass racing some really tough competition and uh, and if you can guess who would be the number one bike in all three categories, single cylinder, twin cylinder, and unlimited, you get a free t-shirt. So put that guess down here in the comments and, uh, and I'll see you on Friday. Show up or shut up, baby. Let's see what you guys got.